When I first saw the Razer Blade 15 OLED at CES earlier this year, it was just kind of sitting on a coffee table in the back room of Razer's booth, and they didn't really tell me much about it. But honestly, they didn't need to. I could tell right then and there what they were about to tell me. One of my favorite laptops to edit on, the Razer Blade 15, was getting a super bright HDR OLED display. Well, it's been almost six months that laptop finally went on sale, so I bought one and figured that now's a good time to do a complete walkthrough on it for you guys. If you guys aren't familiar, a complete walkthrough on this channel is where I try to go through every single feature I possibly can on a new device so that you guys are better prepared should you be in the market to actually go buy one. That said, there is a lot to go through. So let's get started with the styling. Now, the majority of the specs are the same as the latest Razer Blade 15 2019 RTX model that I did a walkthrough on not too long ago, if you wanna check that out below. We have the same new boxy design language that I like, now prevalent across their entire product lineup, from the Stealth to the Pro and even the phones. The chassis is made out of the same CNC milled unibody aluminum and anodized matte black finish. At the time of posting this, there is no option for the OLED model in their mercury white finish, but that might change eventually. We also have the unmistakable three-headed green snake logo on the lid that can be set to light up or not, as well as made to have a breathing effect in their Razer Chroma app. The Blade 15 OLED is 17.8 millimeters thick and weighs 4.83 pounds, about 0.2 pounds more than the same spec FHD 144 hertz screen model, making the OLED panel itself weigh that much more than the LCD one. And that brings us to that beautiful panel. The Blade 15 OLED panel is a 4K 3840 by 2160 one millisecond response time screen covering 100% of the DCI P3 color gamut and is HDR 400 true black certified. Now really quick, a refresher if you aren't familiar with OLED. OLED stands for Organic Light Emitting Diode, and without getting too technical, it's made out of an organic compound that can emit light on its own when there's an electrical current, unlike traditional LEDs that require a backlight. Basically, because of the fact that they can produce their own light and other factors, they can turn off pixels to produce very dark blacks. They can also produce much brighter colors and just have better contrast overall. The downside for OLED technology, though, is that its rated lifespan is lower, although I imagine long enough for the life of a laptop, frankly, and it's not cheap, which we'll talk about more later. Now, the screen is quite impressive. It's like having an expensive TV for a monitor. It's 4K, as I mentioned, capable of playing back HDR content, which you can find on Netflix, YouTube, and a bunch of other places, but it also just makes normal content brighter and pop. It's very difficult for me to show you that, though, on camera. You kind of need to see it in person, but here, at least, is the Blade 15 OLED with the brightness all the way up, playing back some HDR content. Now above that beautiful screen, we have a 720p webcam that is capable of being used for Windows Hello to log into the computer using your face. Beneath the screen, we have our Dolby Atmos stereo speakers, and they sound like this. Now between those is our perky RGB keyboard that can be customized via the Razer Chroma app that controls the logo on the lid that I mentioned. You can also choose from some preset options like fire, breathing, reactive to your typing, my favorite, spectrum cycling, and there's more. You can also set up any of the keys to be any color and fully customize it, or just turn it off entirely, maybe just make it standard white. It's clicky, just like the other Blade 15 keyboards and feels good to type on. It does, however, have this weird rogue function button at the bottom right that I hate. Unlike every other keyboard ever that has the arrow buttons up against the bottom right, Razer on these laptops likes to push it over with the extra function key, causing you to push right instead of down, down instead of left, and function instead of right, etc. Now I'm sure you would eventually get used to this, but considering I don't see any real benefit for it being there in the first place, I'm gonna keep mentioning it in these videos until Razer hopefully finally fixes it. Now under that keyboard, we have a large glass trackpad that is a Microsoft Precision trackpad, meaning that Windows handles the drivers instead of the individual trackpad manufacturers, so it's more precise and can use Windows gestures, which is nice. For ports, we have two USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports. And 3.2 Gen 2, by the way, is just a rebrand of 3.1 Gen 2, 
The specs are identical, the speeds are identical. I'm not sure why the USB people decided to change the name, but there you go. And next to those, we have our proprietary AC charging port and a 3.5 millimeter audio port. On the right, we have a USB-C port that is also Thunderbolt 3 capable, which is great for video editors. We have a third USB 3.2 Gen 2 port, an HDMI 2.0B port, and a mini DisplayPoint 1.4, as well as a Kensington lock to lock the computer to a table if you feel the urge. For battery, we have an 81 hour battery, which is the largest of any of the Razer Blade lineup, including the new Pro models. But in my use, the laptop lasts about the same as the other Blade 15 Advanced models, so about four to five hours while I'm just writing and surfing the web and doing research, and closer to two and a half, three when I'm editing in Premiere. And honestly, it's my biggest complaint about most Razer blades. Now it's not horrible, but it's not great. But here is a quick battery test and how it fared compared to another Razer blade. The OLED option only comes on one configuration for the Blade 15, the top model. This means you get a 9th gen Intel i7 9750H six core processor with a base clock speed of 2.6 gigahertz and a boost speed of 4.5. That is paired with 16 gigs of RAM, but like all of the 15 inch models, you can easily upgrade the RAM all the way up to the maximum of 64 gigs if you want. And we have a 512 gig NVMe PCIe M.2 SSD that you can also upgrade to the max two terabytes. For graphics, we have an NVIDIA RTX 2080 Max-Q GPU with eight gigs of GDDR6 VRAM. And here are some common benchmark scores for anybody interested. Now, thanks to Razer's no bloat policy, it runs Windows 10 and doesn't have any apps that Razer has pre-installed like other manufacturers might do. We do, however, have some Microsoft added bloatware, but you can easily just right click that and hit uninstall. Now, the one app that is from Razer, I don't really consider bloatware, and it's called Synapse. And it allows you to customize the chroma, as I've mentioned, but also create macros, adjust fan speed and performance, settings, etc. Now, the Blade 15 Advanced OLED model is the most expensive model Razer makes. Go figure. It's $3,300 and it is available now. Now, of course, you can get the 240 Hertz full HD non-touchscreen for $3,000 or step down the GPU to a 2070 or 2060 to start saving a lot more. But if you want the latest and greatest in processor, GPU and screen tech, then yes, you're obviously going to be paying a premium for that. There you go, guys. Complete walkthrough on the Razer Blade 15 OLED. I'll leave a link below to the best price that I could find on if you guys are interested in checking that out or just learning more about it. Let me know what you guys think though in the comments below of the laptop of this video. Always trying to do better and always appreciate, you know, hearing from you guys. Otherwise, if you guys like this video, please thumbs up it or share it. Greatly appreciate it. And check out the rest of the channel. And if you like what you see there, please subscribe and ding the bell next to where subscribe so you get notified when I do new videos. Also, there's a link below. You can check that out. It's uh, allowing you to subscribe to my email newsletter that goes out once a week. It has all the videos that are here on YouTube, but also some other things that end up on my website that don't necessarily make it here to YouTube. So check it out, appreciate it. As always though, regardless, thanks for watching.